I am Jacob Hornberger, Libertarian candidate for president. And as you can see, I'm still on the road back from Georgia, heading on over to Virginia. And so I figured I'd give you part two of my post-debate commentary, and this on one of the other two defining issues of this race. The first one being Social Security, which I've already talked to you about, and the second one being immigration. And, uh, you know, while we're on the topic of immigration, I should point out that, you know, in this drive, I, I crossed into South Carolina. I crossed the border into South Carolina. Uh, I've crossed the border into North Carolina. I'll be crossing the border into Virginia. And I don't see any border guards. All I see is sign that says, welcome to North Carolina or welcome to South Carolina, welcome to Virginia. No border guards. And I... I can assure you that I'm not violating anybody's rights by crossing these invisible lines. I mean, I can't even see the border when I cross it. There's no great big red line that says, uh, hey, uh, you're crossing a border here. No, it, the only reason I know I'm crossing the border is because there's a sign that says, welcome to North Carolina. And so crossing a political border is an entirely peaceful act that does not violate the rights of anyone. And so, I, you know, I just bring that up as a prelude to what happened yesterday in the immigration debate. Now, what I did yesterday is I, I employed an argument that I'm almost certain that I have not employed in any of the debates so far. It's a straight political argument with respect to immigration. And I could tell from, I couldn't see the looks on my opponent's faces, but I could I could see the look on the debate moderator, who I talked about in the in my commentary on the on Social Security, a guy named Clint Russell, who is you know your arch typical reform oriented Republican light candidate. He's running for the vice presidential nomination, and and there was no question, I mean, no question that this was not a neutral commentator either on, on Social Security or on immigration. I mean, it was just clear he is one of the Libertarian parties fierce proponents of this Republican position in favor of immigration controls. And so when I when I employed this argument that, that is based purely on straight political grounds, the, the look on his face was priceless. I, he, of course, you won't be able to see the look on his face because the cameras are on the, the debaters, but it was priceless. And I'm almost certain I heard an audible gasp from somebody in the audience who was obviously an immigration control advocate because the political point that I made was so stunning and, and so contrary to what they believe that they didn't know what to make of it. And, and so I'm, let me start out by, by that, by the point I made, the straight political point, and then I'll go into the substantive parts of what's going on with this immigration uh, issue and especially in the context of last night's debate. So the political point is this. Okay, all of my opponents favor the system of immigration controls that we have. It's a Republican system. It's also a Democrat system. I mean, Republicans accuse Biden of having open borders, which is pure nonsense. Uh, you know, open borders is what I favor. That means the abolition of the Border Patrol, the, the abolition of the Immigration Service, the dismantling of the police state along the border, all the warrantless searches, the highway checkpoints, um, total unrestricted movements of free of good services of people across borders. Okay? Just like I'm driving right here. Right here okay? The, the same system that I'm driving back to Virginia where you know nobody's stopping me at the border. That's what I favor. That's the real concept of open borders. Uh, not, not the fact that, that Biden might be enforcing this system that both Republicans and Democrats agree on uh, in a different way than Republicans, but rather that they both favor this system and they may enforce it in different ways. Uh, I mean, it's interesting that, that Biden first came out against Trump's Berlin Wall down there, but then said, oh, well, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complete this Berlin Wall too. So, so you, you have this variation of enforcement, but they all coalesce into supporting the same system. And of course, this is where the, the, the Republican light proponents of immigration controls in our party want us to go. They want us to adopt the same position as Republicans and Democrats in one form or another. You know, we adopt this system of immigration controls and run it in, in ways that, that, that libertarians want to run, you know, uh, which may be lenient or, or 
know, fierce like Trump and, and DeSantis. But the point is, is that they all favor the system of immigration controls. And there's people in our party that want us to get on the same page as them. I favor a system of open borders, which has been the, the position of the Libertarian Party for, for you know, 53 years that we've been in existence. It's one of the distinguishing positions in the Libertarian Party and, and, and the Libertarian movement and the Libertarian philosophy. It's one of the reasons I joined the Libertarian Party was this, you know, here I, I discovered a party that, that adhered to straight Libertarian principles. You know, I read the party platform in 1990 and I was stunned because when I was invited to join the platform committee in that year, you know, I ended up serving three terms on the platform committee, I was real skeptical. You know, and I thought, oh, the Libertarian Party is just doing a bunch of ad hoc public policy proposals that are watered down compromises to get votes. And this guy who invited me to serve on the platform committee, committee sent me the platform, and I was stunned. I mean, this was a virtually, not 100%, but virtually libertarian manifesto. Abolish Social Security, abolish Medicare, no, no ifs, ands, and buts. Abolish the FBI, the CIA, which were later taken out to, to appease Republicans, obviously, and, and open borders. So that that is the genuine libertarian position because, as I, as I stated, when you cross a border, which I'm doing right now, you're engaging in a per purely peaceful act. And that is the essence of the non-aggression principle in the libertarian philosophy. The right to engage in any act that's, that's peaceful, that doesn't involve the initiation of force or fraud against other people. Uh, so the straight political point I made last night was this, that the, the libertarian control position that is the position that supports the Republican-Democrat position in favor of this system of immigration controls will garner zero votes for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate. That just stunned Russell and stunned the, the Libertarian proponents of immigration controls in the audience because it's so contrary to what they're convinced is the case. Now, why, why is this? Well... They often point out, the, the advocates of, libertarian, of immigration controls, that the Libertarian Party needs to shift in favor of this position because most Americans favor immigration controls. And therefore, this will be a popular position for vote getting. But don't, they don't think it through. See, that, that's one of the problems in this party, is that, is that there's not this deeper thinking of what we need to do to get this, this party on the right track. And also to garner a large number of votes. We just, we just, you know, Jacob, we kind of keep running the same kind of candidate, reform-oriented, Republican life, over and over and over again. No, no, no. Let's let's just stop and think and, and ask, why is it that we keep getting the 1%? Let's try to analyze that. You know, and, and some people are just loath to do that. But that's what we need to do. We need to think at a deeper level here. So why do I say that? Because that was a stunner. You know, th their position is this is a popular position among the American people. I, I don't know what the percentage is, but let's just hypothesize and say 80% of Americans favor immigration controls. All right. The, who are the right-wing proponents of immigration controls? And that's, that's who the Republican lights in our party uh, are going after, the Republican vote. You know, they're trying to appease Republicans with their message of reform and Republican light. That's our target audience. No question about that. So who are the, the ardent proponents, the right-wing ardent proponents, who are outside the party going to vote for with respect to immigration controls? Are they going to vote for the Libertarian Party presidential candidate? Let's assume the Libertarian Party presidential candidate is as fierce a proponent as Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. And there, there's one, one person vying for the nomination that really is. He's backing off from that right now, but before he became... Uh, presidential candidate, I mean, he was talking about sealing the border and uh, completing Donald Trump's Berlin Wall with, of course, eminent domain. Imagine that as a message going out. You know, the Libertarian Party stands for the eminent domain stealing of people's property that's been in their, their families for generations. Well, that's, that's a real winner message as far as vote gets, vote getting. Uh, but let's assume that that's, that's the nominee of this party. As fierce a proponent of immigration controls as Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. And there's, there's always a possibility that Trump could make DeSantis his vice presidential candidate. 
who are the right wing proponents of immigration controls who are outside the party going to vote for? Duh. They're going to vote 100% for Donald Trump. Why would they waste their vote on a Libertarian Party presidential candidate who's advocating immigration controls? It'd be dumb for them to do that. And especially because Trump's going to be saying, obviously, we need to stop the steal again. He's going to be saying that they stole the vote from me, stole the election four years ago, so we need to flood the ballot box this time. You can't waste your vote on a Libertarian Party presidential candidate who's a proponent of what I'm a proponent of. That's what Trump's going to be saying. You got to flood the ballot box for me here. In fact, he already said that in New Hampshire. Flood the ballot box with votes for me so that I can overwhelm Haley and knock her out of the race. He will be saying that in the general election. He will be exhorting his supporters. Every right-wing supporter of immigration controls is going to vote for Donald Trump, not the Libertarian Party presidential candidate who's advocating immigration control. See, this is what the the advocates of immigration controls inside the party have not thought about. It's this superficial thinking that since most Americans favor immigration controls, that means that immigration controls, you know, proposing them and defending them is an asset, a political asset for an LP presidential candidate. It's the exact opposite. It's an albatross. It's a liability. It cannot go under votes. And, and to the extent that there's left-wing proponents of, of immigration controls, and there's a lot of them too, obviously Biden and the Democratic Party, uh, they're not going to vote for, for Trump, obviously, but they got Biden to vote for. I mean, Biden's sending troops down there, and worst comes to worst, they can vote for Bobby Kennedy Jr., who is as fierce a proponent of immigration controls as Donald Trump. And, and he theoretically would have a, a chance of winning. No right-wing or left-wing proponent of immigration controls is going to vote for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that favors immigration controls on that issue. Zero votes. They, they will get the votes of the of the right-wingers inside the party who support immigration controls, but you know, how many votes is that? Not very many. And so it's a political liability, and that's what they haven't thought through. Now, take my position of open borders, okay? There are a huge number, there is a huge number of people out there that are sick and tired of this perpetual crisis, 80, 90-year-old crisis, the death, the suffering, the, the, the rapes, the kidnappings, the, the transporters, black market transporters, the police stayed along the border. There's people along the border that hate the Border Patrol. I grew up on the border. I spent half my life there. I know this from personal experience. They hate this system. They just don't know there's a viable alternative. But if they hear a viable alternative, and that is open borders, and that's the only viable alternative there is. It's the only solution to this thing. I've been saying this for 30 years. It's the only viable alternative. They will jump for it because they're, they're just looking for leadership. They're, they're looking for a, an alternative to the death and the suffering in the police state that comes with this system and the crisis, perpetual crisis. Those are my voters. That's why I keep saying that this message of principle has the potential, the very real potential of breaking this party out in the presidential race to 10 to 15%, because those are my voters that I can garner with my open border position. My opponents can't get these votes because these voters are never gonna vote for any proponent of immigration controls, libertarian, Republican, but you give them an, a viable option of somebody who can competently make this case, and I can competently make it. I've been making this case for more than 30 years. I published a book, co-edited a book called The Case for Free Trade and Open Immigration. Okay? Uh, and I've been, you know, countless articles and speeches on this issue. I can make the case, the, the religious case, the economic case, the ethical, ethical case, the moral case, the economic case for open borders. So those are my block of voters that will come in and vote for the Libertarian Party. Now, does it really matter? If you get 10 to 15%, does it matter where the votes come from? I mean, do they do they necessarily have to come from the Republican Party to make people happy? Not for me. We're a political party. We're not a debating society. We're not a membership organization. We're a political party. Our job is to lead America to freedom and garner large numbers of votes. Okay. I'm saying that this is a, a, a situation that involves messaging. And this message of our principles can garner a large number of votes, while their principles 
of, of control borders and immigration reform and health care reform and drug war reform, 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 cannot garner votes. We know that. And that's what the two Wall Street Journal polls are already saying, 1% for 2024. Unless we change directions, and that's what I keep saying. Let's give the American people a presidential campaign this time around that they are totally not expecting. A campaign that is based 100% on our principles. Now, last night, so I, I told you that this guy, Clint Russell, you know, he's a classic, arch-typical reformer, Republican light, um, vice presidential candidate, who's one of the, the debate moderators, who really becomes one of the debaters. I mean, I'm debating him on the issue of immigration, along with all of my proponents, because I'm the only proponent of open borders in this case. I mean, that's why I say this is one of the defining issues. Okay, if, if you want uh, an advocate of immigration controls, you, you can vote for any of them, okay? You can vote for Clint Russell, you know, for vice president. But if you want a, a candidate for open borders, there's, there's only one option there. All right. So Clint Russell uh, immediately comes out in the attack. At the, at the very beginning of the debate, it's clear where he stands. Where, you know, he says, what? I, I forget the exact phrasing of his question, but the thrust of it is, what do we need to do to support Governor Abbott in Texas with his, his efforts to enforce immigration controls and stop the invasion, you know, of the, the invaders <laughs> into, into the state of Texas? And, of course, he's referring to the, to the immigrants uh, who, are, who are circumventing the police state that they have down there, the police state that immigration advocates support. Because this is the way you enforce immigration controls. Now, when I say immigration police state, I'm not exaggerating. I lived under this police state almost half my life. I've, I've been victimized by it, being stopped by the Border Patrol, driving down the highway, you know, open your trunk and this, this kind of nonsense. I know about the highway checkpoints. I went through them, you know, every time I'd go from Laredo, my hometown, to, to, uh, to San Antonio. Uh, I grew up on a farm in the Rio Grande. We hired illegal immigrants. They were the hardest working people I've ever seen. They got busted by the Border Patrol. They, they would come into our farm without a, without a warrant. And uh, this is what living is like at, uh, under a police state. And uh, so you, 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 you've got this system that hasn't worked. And so Governor Abbott is saying, well, I'm going to make it work, which, which, you know, we've seen for all my life, this, this belief that you're going to make this system work. And so, so uh, Russell's there, you know, essentially saying, what do we do to, to support him? Because the federal judges have, have issued, a federal judge has issued an injunction uh, telling Abbott, shut it down. Now, what's Abbott doing? Well, he's putting concertina wire inside the Rio brand with buoys in there that are cutting immigrants up. I mean, there's two people, uh, at least two people that have, that have drowned there that presumably hit these buoys in this concertina wire, which is under, under, underwater. And, and it, it apparently cut them up so bad that, that they drowned. And concertina wires, which used in war, okay, when you've got a defensive position and, and, and you're expecting a, a, an attack on your position, you surround your position with concertina wire because it is so sharp that it'll just rip a, an attacker to shreds unless he can figure out a way to get rid of that concertina wire like with a grenade or something like that. That's what they're putting down there. And so it's more death, more suffering, and more efforts to make the police state work. It's, it's an abomination. And this is what, what people like Russell cannot see. It's a moral abomination. Because he's putting the Libertarian Party out there saying, we favor this kind of thing. And if there's one thing that, that Libertarianism is not, it is not a philosophy of death and suffering and concertina wires and buoys that are causing death and suffering and the deaths in the backs of tractor trailers and deaths of people dying on the desert. Okay, when you see a program that is that is inextricably bound up with death and suffering, that is a 100% conclusive sign that that is not a libertarian position because libertarianism is a positive philosophy of life, vitality, freedom, the pursuit of happiness, okay? So here you have a system that involves a police state that is killing people, injuring people. You can Google about Trump's Berlin Wall. The surgeons are now having to deal with emergency cases with people falling from the wall, getting injured, spinal injuries. 
Okay, this is what a police state brings: death and suffering. Now, let me let me go down to the real crux here. That every one of my opponents, and this guy Russell, they all support this system in varying forms. Okay, that they're, they're, they're one in. One, one guy says, I want an Ellis Island kind of system. Ellis Island kind of, I want, I want, you know, the, the, where the government lets in anybody who's qualified and, uh, and isn't sick and uh, whatever. I want the government to make this decision and let in more immigrants. So he's not one of these that says immigrants are, are destroying American culture. He says immigrants are good. They, they, my grandparents were immigrants, etc. And I want more immigrants. Okay, well, that's anathema. To the, to the people on the other, the, the far right wing of this issue that want to seal the border, that, that say, and, and, and there's one candidate in the, in the race for the nomination that, that before he became an, um, a presidential candidate was saying, seal the border completely, uh, finish Trump's Berlin Wall, uh, the immigrants are destroying our culture. He's backed off from that. And, and, um, and he's trying to back off from his uh, Berlin Wall um, completion, which necessarily involves Eminent domain stealing. So you know, imagine a Libertarian Party presidential candidate telling Americans that, that we love, you know, immigration. Uh, I mean, uh, eminent domain stealing. But the common denominator of all this is leaving government in charge. So e even the even the candidate that says, "Oh, I favor favor an Ellis Island system," is saying, "I want the government to make this determination. I just want them to manage the system." like they did back in the 1800s and let most people in. Now, let is the operative word there though. Let is not freedom. Let is by permission, all right? So a genuine system of open borders is not a system where government's making this determination. And once you let government make this determination, you have to assume that they're gonna adopt a plan that may not be in accordance with your plan, that you may get the wrong guy in public office that says I want to exclude, you know, Asians, and that was what the the, the exclusion act in the late 1800s was all about, to exclude to, to exclude Asians, and so there at, at Angel Island, which was the counterpart to Ellis Island over on the west coast, they started excluding Asians, and then that later evolved into Italians and Irish, and then Jews. You know, Roosevelt, Fre Pre President Roosevelt, used the government control system to prevent German Jews from escaping Germany and coming to the United States in the 1930s. And so this is why this system of leaving government in charge is horrific because the government doesn't always do what a libertarian wants it to do. Inevitably, you get the wrong people and the wrong ideas running the system, not to mention the fact that there were tremendous abuses at Ellis Island. Um, for example, women, especially women with with nice figures, were required to stand in front of a, of a panel of men, like 10 men, and required to remove their blouses and their bras so that the men could make sure they weren't, their, their, their breasts weren't diseased in some way. Yeah, come on, right. I mean, it, that's the kind of abuse that was taking place at, 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 when government is in charge of this thing. And so, the, the, the candidates in this race that say, oh, I want to leave the government in charge and I want them to let more immigrants in, you know, they favor the same type of government control system. And, 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 and it's a government control system that is subject to severe abuse. And it's not freedom. Freedom is what I'm doing right now, crossing borders without engaging in any kind of Ellis Island inspection station. Okay? There's nobody stopping me. To, to inspect my car or to inspect my health or whatever. That's what genuine freedom is all about. Now, what about this, this issue of the crisis? You see, this is what they don't get. Clint Russell clearly does not get this. That the crisis, which I've seen all my life, is caused by the system. And I made that point last night, and I could tell that eyes were opening. In fact, after the debate, one guy came up to me and he says, Jacob... I've been a proponent of government-controlled borders, I guess, all my life. You opened up my eyes, and I am now an advocate of open borders. Wow. Okay, a shift in one person there. But if one person can shift, another person can shift, and another person. This is the value of argumentation and debate, that people can shift. 
And as the party shifts toward principle, now we are in a position to lead America to freedom. But it, 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 it means a recognition that the crisis that we're facing along the border, the crisis they lament, the, the, the Clint Russell's laments, oh, the refugee camps and, and the invasion, the crisis is rooted in the system itself. They cannot see this. That is, their system produces the crisis that then motivates them to have the police state. And then they use the police state and an ever-expanding police state to try to eliminate the crisis that their system is producing. You see, it's a socialist system. It's a system based on central planning. As Ludwig von Mises said, central planning produces planned chaos. It, it, it's central planning the movements of millions upon millions of people in one of the most complex labor markets in history. You can't do it. The, the, the central planner lacks the, the requisite knowledge that comes with a spontaneous free market. Can't do it. Now there's there's this notion everybody in the world will come to America. Pure nonsense. You know, Austin, Texas is a nice place to live, which is why a lot of Californians are flooding into Austin. Does the whole nation flood into Austin? Because it's a nicer place? Of course not. People like where they live. And the same applies to people all over the world. People like where they live, believe it or not. You know, and to come to a different country is not an easy task. You know, to leave your, your homeland and your, your language and your family and, and your customs and traditions and what you're accustomed to, it takes a rare person. The reason they think that the whole world would come here is because they see this backlog of people at the border. But that's the result of central planning. That would clear out immediately with open borders. There would be no more crisis, and that's the point that to eliminate this crisis that is rooted in the system, you have to recognize that the crisis is rooted in the system. It's like the drug war. There's a big drug war crisis. Now you can keep cracking down and cracking down and cracking down trying to resolve the crisis. But when you finally realize that the crisis is caused by the, the drug war itself, by drug laws, then you say, aha, the way to reduce in, in the crisis is legalized drugs. Okay? You get rid of the cartels immediately, overnight. But the drug war proponents can't see that. They're blind to that. So they keep having this drug war police state. Same thing with immigration. The immigration proponents in our party, the Republican lights, cannot see that the crisis is rooted in the system that they support. And that's why they, they continue calling it for an expansion of the police state. Concertina wire, buoys, uh, you know, more border patrol, militarize the border, finish the Berlin Wall, more and more and more, none of it ever works. I mean, what they really won't be happy until it's a totally militarized border, okay? Totally, just like North Korea. That's what will make them happy. And my hunch is it still won't work. Because a lot of people come here on visas and just overstay the visas. They circumvent the wall completely. So, but you've got to recognize, once you recognize that the crisis is rooted in the system, that the system has caused the crisis, then you realize, like the drug war, there's only one way to end the crisis. Open borders. Eliminate the system. The system that's producing the crisis. Duh. Okay. And that's the only solution there is. And this is where Clint Russell and the, uh, my debate opponents, my proponents, they cannot bring themselves to see that. So we end up with a candidacy, uh, possibly, that we've run for the last 25 years. Immigration reform, Social Security reform, health care reform, drug war reform, monetary reform, 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 that cannot garner votes. We know that. The Wall Street Journal polls are already saying that. And so if we're going to lead America to freedom, that immigration is your perfect example to lead America to freedom. To, to, to stand for the oppressed, the, the, the victimized, the, the, the teeming masses yearning to breathe free. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, your inner briefing. Those are the people this party needs to be fighting for. The people that cannot fight for themselves. To stand for them. To, to, to keep this light of liberty open for them. If we join Republicans and Democrats, they will love it. Republicans and Democrats will love it. When people are engaged in wrongdoing, they love when other people join them. We've got to stand apart from them. We've got to stick with our principles. The non-aggression principle. The pledge we take never to support the initiation of force got to continue being the beacon for the people that are being victimized by the killing machine that both Democrats and Republicans support. I'm Jacob Hornberger, Libertarian candidate for president. My campaign website is jacobforliberty.com.